Today we have to talk about what was apparently a wild, and according to the opinions of many that were on board, a nightmarish Royal Caribbean cruise. Now the loyal to royals aren't going to like this one, however I absolutely got to talk about it. We're talking about over 300 passengers kicked off, smells of Mary Jane and drugs on board, fights, arrest, all that jazz. So much so that you have a lot of people trying to get in touch with legal teams about class action lawsuits against Royal Caribbean, or at least the people that were on board calls from the Ruckers, and even people writing emails to the CEO of Royal Caribbean. Now, full transparency here, I was waiting a little while as this cruise that recently took place that people are calling Hell on Earth was about a week or so ago, and I was trying to see if there were going to be any media teams covering this, there were going to be any articles. However, I haven't seen any, and at first I was wondering if any of this actually happened considering the massive amount of emails and attention that has been drawn to a specific cruise, or is it just that Royal Caribbean's PR team is that good? And Well, I got to tell you, Royal Caribbean's PR team and their media team is absolutely immaculate. There's a reason why you don't hear a lot about Royal Caribbean. It's not because they have less drama than Carnival. Well, I guess an argument probably could be made there. However, nevertheless, Royal Caribbean is very good at kind of just kind of sealing the deal on issues that come up to the point to where we really don't hear about them. However, one fact remains that kind of made it obvious that there were going to be some issues on board, and that was because there was a cash cow on board the specific ship, a group cruise, a massive one of that that involved a rapper. And, well, I gotta talk about this. By the way, before we dive into this conundrum here, I quickly want to give an announcement to all of you. I have started another YouTube channel. A lot of you were saying that maybe you'd like a YouTube channel where I do news involving travel, but outside of cruising. I have now done that. I have a new channel called the Travel News Channel, so make sure you guys go check it out. I will leave a link in the description box below, and I'll be uploading there from Sunday through Thursday every single day, and well, I'm excited. I want to be able to talk about other things like what's going on with the airlines and other potential issues that may be arising. It's going to be, of course, trending topics, so it's not too boring, but I'm also debating if I'm going to be doing maybe one topic at a time like I do here on this channel, or maybe just kind of bundling into like maybe three to five topics per video. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section below. Make sure you guys go subscribe right now, and uh, well, I appreciate you, and I'm excited. Oh, and of course, one more thing I do have to mention, this new channel will not affect my other two channels, that of which being this channel here, The Ship Life, and my vlog channel, Jay the Nomad, as I am finally taking on some editors. You have no idea how happy I am. I hate editing. It takes so long, longer than recording, and well, I will be doing some more vlogs on my other channel, Jay the Nomad, as well. I've been just relaxing from the travel a little bit, but I'm getting back to it next week. I have a cruise in two weeks, and then one after that, and then one after that, all leading up to the brand new ships that are being launched in December, the Celebrity Ascent, and the Carnival Jubilee. So make sure you guys stay tuned, and of course, subscribe to all the channels. There was recently a cruise that took place between August 15th and 22nd on board Royal Caribbean's Allure of the Seas. Now, the Allure of the Seas is no small ship by any measure. It's one of the largest operating cruise ships in the entire world, launched in 2009, holds over 5,500 passengers. This ship will be sailing out of Galveston, Texas, going to the Caribbean, a very standard cruise, nevertheless a vacation of a lifetime for many. Now on this cruise, there will be a group cruise with a rapper by the name of Jadakiss. If you've never heard of Jadakiss, he was a very prominent rapper. I wanna say probably late 90s up into the early 2000s. He's still making music, but in my personal opinion, I don't really listen to him. I don't think it's really hitting like it used to. Nevertheless, there are two things that you have to understand here. This is the group cruiser side of things, and the the rap slash hip-hop side of things. And I'm talking about modern rap, the kind that nobody really likes that's on the radio. And well, as somebody that is an avid hip-hop head, the old school, I guess you could say, the true school is what we call it. I'm a b-boy, right? I'm used to being around certain environment and we stand for positivity when it comes to hip-hop, whereas this one, well, we'll talk about that later on. But what you gotta understand on the group crew side of things is that, like I said at the beginning of the video, it is absolutely a cash cow for cruise lines when they were able to bring in big groups and hire all of these teams to bring in uh, just just a massive amount of people for one group. This is what you eventually come to if they get big enough, turns into somewhat of the buyouts and the charter cruises, be it the Bob Marley cruise, the LGBT cruise, the rock cruise, you name it. These group cruises bring in a lot of guap, moolah, bread, cheddar, cheese for the specific cruise line. So much so that many have talked about and rumored and well even confirmed that there are a lot of bending of the rules when it comes to cruise lines and big enough group cruises to the point to where a lot a lot of things just kind of slide under the rug and there isn't a lot of vetting getting done and well, just keep that in mind as we go through this video. So for this specific cruise, Jada Chris would be hosting something known as the Paradise Island Cruise, the biggest ever, which there were apparently over 600 people that would be attending this cruise and being a part of the group. Now, according to many, that group was wearing red shirts or something like that. 
However, like I said, you have to understand when it comes to these group cruises, they are cash cow, but at the same time, what you got to understand about the hip hop industry is there is something known as goons, and there are a lot of people that want to portray a certain lifestyle. So you could imagine when you got a lot of people that are affiliated with a certain rap group, and let's be clear here, I'm not talking about race. I know some people are going to bring that up. I'm not whatsoever, but this is somebody that even when I work for the Globetrotters, there'd be a lot of rappers, and I've been to a lot of parties, I'll tell you that. I've seen a lot of things. There is a certain type of lifestyle that goes with it that really nobody can deny. Just imagine along with the lifestyle that comes with the hip hop culture, modern day hip hop culture, you have a lot of people that have never been on a cruise before. They've never even been on a boat. They are literally cruise virgins. They don't have cruise etiquette. And as you could imagine as well, you're going to have a lot of people that are just naturally going to bring contraband on board. They're going to sneak stuff in like the Mary Jane. And now this happens whether this is a group cruise and a rapper group cruise or not. It happens, I kid you not, every single cruise. So there are reports of Mary Jane smells all on board. There were people that were being aggressively drunk and belligerent. They had that liquid courage in them. There were fights and all leading up to between, I guess, Honduras and Cozumel, you had over 300 people within that group that were allegedly kicked off. I do hope they had their passports with them. However, it's technically not required. And keep in mind, there were guaranteed a lot of people on that ship that have never cruised before. So hey, it can't be confirmed at this point. Now you do have a lot of people speaking out about this if you guys want to get an idea of what went down go add the allure of the seas group page from october 15th through the 22nd you'll see tons and tons of proof and pictures and videos by the way and you can see what exactly went down there were people that were saying that they were fearing for their life and there are other people that were saying that this was the worst royal caribbean cruise that they've ever taken they only sail with royal caribbean and well i do have to look at both sides of it meanwhile do keep in mind this is a massive ship there were a lot of people that said they had a great time there are a lot of people that also brought race into it and well it just became this giant mess but i've seen things happen when i've been on especially that class of ship the oasis class i've seen incidents take place in which it was a massive event but there was still a big section of people that were on board that same cruise that didn't see a thing i don't want to dwell too much on the details here because i do believe in the grand scheme of things there is a bigger lesson to be learned mainly on the side of royal caribbean we know that they are at least on paper well in my opinion the best cruise line out there they are a well-oiled machine their ships are absolutely amazing Amazing. Their product is amazing. It's very consistent, I want to say. And with them having the largest ships in the entire world and, you know, the private island, Coco Cay, and all the advancements and installments that are being done over there, they are absolutely killing it. There is no doubt about it. However, one thing that can be very easily overlooked is vetting the people that have the money to pay for your services by way, of course, of a group or charter cruise. Because, well, as you can see, there is the wrong groups that haven't been vetted properly or maybe giving clear instructions of what can and can't be done. And now you have this kind of craziness taking place on board, which should have been avoided from the beginning. I'll be honest with all of you. I'm not exactly sure how this video is going to get received by the people that view it. I know there's going to be one camp that a lot of people are going to say that I make absolute sense that Royal Caribbean should probably vet and understand that if you bring a modern day rap hip hop group on board a cruise ship, then well, you're probably gonna get a certain type, maybe a stereotypical set of results. Some people are gonna come at me calling me the typical Uncle Tom or a hater, or maybe I'm just being judgmental against my own people or whatever. No, I don't look at it that way at all. I'm just somebody that understands the hip hop culture, somebody that is a b-boy and goes to both the modern day hip hop events and as well as the old school hip hop events. I can tell you who the first DJ was for hip hop, the godfather of hip hop. I have all the knowledge. Somebody wanna go toe to toe with me on the knowledge and by all means have at it, I just understand and the differences between the two, especially when it comes to their event that they are hosting. There are going to be people in other camps that are going to have other differing opinions as well. I want to hear all of it. Bring it on, guys. Of course, on your way out, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Go subscribe to my new channel, my travel news channel. I'm so excited. I have a video coming up today, and I'll have videos coming up after that. And Well, let's see how it goes. I appreciate all of you guys. I love all of you, and I'll see you later. Take it easy.